All righty. Everything seems to be working well. Don't listen to Ian Munro. Don't read his comments in the uh, comment section. They're saying we should all pretend we can't hear him. Hopefully you can. So just drop me a comment again. Now that I am here on screen, drop me a comment in the uh, comment section so I know that you can not just hear me, but you can see me. That would really, really help making sure that everything's working fine. But folks, again, thank you so much for joining me. I think are we on about number 10 now? I was, Gary was asking me how many we've done of these now. I think is it 10 in a row? I don't know. We've had some amazing guests. We really, really have. It's been really good. I'm really into this. And to see so many familiar names coming back week on week, it's just really, really appreciated. So thanks for that. Uh, but we are definitely in for a treat tonight. Me and, uh, me and Gary have been chatting uh, in the week and also obviously this evening before we go live. And it's just, I'm kind of like, where do you start? There is so much to this. And I get a feeling that this week, Gary's going to be leading me as opposed to me leading Gary. But uh, I think you're going to love it. But before we do it, usual thing, just a, just a couple of uh, admin things. It's kind of like the one with Ian Munro last week. We're going to need as much time as we can get this evening. But just a couple of things I wanted to mention for you, first of all. The first one is that uh, conference season, like I said, it's only now, I think tomorrow, the pre-conference day starts for the iPhone uh, photography conference. And you can still get an uh, early bird pass to, those, uh, to the classes that are going to be shown on the Tuesday and Wednesday. So uh, there's a lot that I've kind of covered in preparing for that iPhone conference. There's a lot I've learned about it. So if you're into your iPhone photography or your mobile photography, definitely keep an eye on my newsletter. Nice shameless little plug there, which is coming out. Should be tomorrow, but I need, I need one extra day because there's quite a few things I'm going to put in there which are to do with neutral density filters, circular polarizers, and a few other little surprises with regards to RAW files and Apple Pro RAW files, which you might find interesting. Uh, so that's one thing. And the other thing to let you know about as well, yesterday I squeezed in some time to put up a uh, pre-recorded video. There'd been a very, um, not, not a huge update on Photoshop, but there's a very, very useful update. We've got the adjustment layers that we have in Photoshop. We can now have our own presets made from adjustments within the layers panel in Photoshop. So it's incredibly useful. Not only can we save them, we can export them, we can import them. So yeah, big, big, it's, you know, it's big news. It's a small update, but it's a really big update, if you know what I mean. It's kind of very, very useful. Um, but that's enough of that. Let's get Gary in. But before we do, Usual thing, we're going to play a little bit of a video. This isn't one I've put together. You know, Gary's well prepared. He sent me this little video over to give you an idea of some of the stuff we're going to talk about tonight. I think, is it maybe 60 seconds long-ish, something like that? We'll play that, then I'll bring the main man in. So, uh, yeah, here's Gary's promo. Yeah, I just saw my friend Lee Churchill just post up there. Oh, wow. You're not wrong. And I think Amanda said as well, she's got the chill when she saw those pictures there. You're in for a treat. Let's get the man in now. This is where I get that. Oh, I hope this works all right. So I'm going to say, Gary, tell me you can hear me. Oh, I can hear you, Glenn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've no idea the relief. Rick Rick has wounded me. The, you know, that, that week that we had when... Uh, when Rick's didn't work when he first came in, it's wounded me. I, I'm yeah, but hey, hey, but listen, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, I mean, comments coming in already, mate. Look at this, images are incredible. It's yeah, it's where do we start? Where do we start, Gary? You know, I mean, where do we start? But I'm going to kind of ask you. Let's get the ball rolling first of all. I'm going to kind of ask you. Obviously, it's going back a few years when we first met. I mm -hmm. know that you came along to when I was doing workshops back then. You came along to a couple of workshops I think that I did, but yeah. picking a camera up and doing stuff, 
Where did that all start for you, mate? Started with my dad when I was three, actually. Um, had me in a dark room. Um, taught me to use dark room equipment, camera, etc. cetera. Um, unfortunately, he passed away uh, just before Christmas, sadly. He would have absolutely loved uh, to see yeah, this. Yeah. Um, but but uh, he started, in fact, he, was, he belonged to a camera club where um, Alfred Hitchcock was the life president. And he used to get them taking photographs uh, by candlelight. So I had all of that background um, and then went to uni. That all kind of stopped. 2007, bought a digital camera, joined the camera club because I wanted to know what I could do with it. Um, started doing a few bits and pieces. And then I came to one of your tutorials <laughs> in uh, Oxford uh, blew my mind completely. Uh, Dave was there as well. So, uh, all right, okay, you... Mr. Clayton, yeah, 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 completely uh, blew my mind, but it realized that all the things that were going around in my head that I wanted to do finally, if I came learnt enough, I would have the tools that would enable me to put the kind of pictures together that was after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, since then, I don't know how long ago that was now. It's scary when you kind of try yeah, to look back 12. and kind of pinpoint when things were. But what, 12, 13 years, if not longer, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. 2012 it was. Yeah. 2012. Wow. I mean, that's scary. But I mean, thinking about what's happened there then, since that initial workshop, which I'm guessing would have been something to do with like selections and masks and all that kind of thing, something which you've clearly used a lot of, and we'll have to we'll go through that with your images. But then all of a sudden, I, I, want to, I want to dive straight into this. Then all of a sudden, this, this idea that you have for something, these things that you said that were in your head, you now mm. started to have the tools at your disposal. You had a bit more of an understanding. So what was this idea that you initially had then that you wanted to kind of put together? So I wanted to, I wanted a theme. And I got a Photoshop magazine, uh, and it was a it, within the magazine. There was this is how you create a steampunk image, which is basically was take a picture of a, a model and you stick bits of cloth and all sorts on her, and there you go, you've got a steampunk uh, image. Where, and I thought there must be people that do this for real. Found the Lincoln Steampunk Festival, which is actually the world's largest steampunk event, um, and it's every every year of August Bank Holiday. And in 2012, I went along and um, met two people in particular, which was um, Peter and Julie Walton. I met them, and I will talk about them a little bit later on. Um, and we had a photo shoot. And um, the image that I wanted to create, which uh, is a um, comes from a Sting song. I was driving home one night. Um, I think you've got that there to uh, bring up. But I was driving home one night. That's the image. Um, when we dance, angels run and hide came on the um, came on the radio, and this image came to me, um, and that's what we created. This was that was the very first image. And Julie said, "I think you've got a story here. Uh, why don't you call it the Imaginarium?" But so, well, I'm, I'm gonna, you're going to find that I butt in quite a bit tonight because yeah, yeah, I know that yeah, you could just run yeah. with this and talk. But mm. let's just quickly just rewind a second then, Gary. Let's look at this image here. You say that there was a song by Sting, which was called what? When We Dance, Angels Run and Hide Their Wings is the full title of the song. Right, and so, so that, those, that image those, there then, yeah. You, you from that, you then kind of come up with this. I mean... Yeah, so it from that that was only ever going to be probably a little six image panel or whatever. Um, I didn't realise that it would turn into four hundred and fifty image trilogy. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't ever think that. Um, wow. But and also to be fair, I mean, steampunks are unbelievably creative. That's what binds the, everybody together. The fact that they yeah. are so creative. Um, you'll get some people that will spend months creating their costume. There'll be some uh, that will make it on a Thursday night and turn up on a Saturday wearing it. But Pete and Julie, who are actually the two people in the picture, are the are the actual main characters for the story. Julie makes a lot of costumes. Pete makes all the props. So the the, the wings that the angels are wearing 
uh, Pete actually made those. And that's what I saw at my very first asylum, which is what the uh, Lincoln Steampunk Festival was called. And that's where the, the whole idea came from. Um, so f so for some reason then, somehow, there's, there's a part of you that when you had that song in your head and you hear it, that something has made you come up with that idea. And then that, you say, you were then prompted that you've got a bit of story here. Now, that's all well and good saying that. That's how it all happened. But my question is, where does that come from? Do you know what I mean? There, there has to be some out, outside influence that has kind of given you... You know, because when, when we talk about Ian Munro last week, he mentioned mm. that there were certain, you know, artists, photographers that he takes inspiration and ideas from, but then cooks them up in his own head and comes up with his stuff. With you, where is that coming from? Where's the equivalent of what Ian has in his head coming into your head? Where does that come from? A lot of people think I smoke something dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the questions I, I get asked a lot is, what, what, what are you on? Um, I, I'm not entirely sure. My dad always thought that uh, I'd taken a trip to the dark side. My wife thought I'd completely lost the plot. Um, but um, I think that I think you've got to be able to let your imagination run wild. And I, and uh, the bit that I the bit that I like the most is is the idea. How do I get to the end result mm -hmm. that bit in between that's the problem solving and i'm a problem solver i was a design technology technical drawing and um and sometimes i had to do the uh, cover for the art teacher but that that's for three years that's what i did before mm -hmm. i um before i left uh, teaching but i've always had a very creative mind um and the difference it's interesting watching ian last week because ian um Ian and I work very differently, but we do get similar kind of results in that, except that I don't sketch anything out. Right. I, I see the complete image totally finished in my head. Totally finished. It's Talk of the devil, there he is now. Look, Ian Monroe, yeah. <laughs> I can relate, he says. I can relate. Yeah. So uh, I, I see everything completely finished, but then obviously the issue then becomes, okay, if that's the image you want to create, where are all the sections? There, there will be way better photographers than me watching this um, live show. There'll be way yeah, better. Yeah, but 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 on that, let's just talk, think about something we spoke about offline going in earlier in the week. You you kind of actually said I was quite surprised you said it, but you said I'm not a photographer. I don't call myself a mm. photographer. Is that right? You I'm not. I know. Yeah. I'm, plural, I'm an art the camera is a tool for you, is that right? Yeah, I'm an artist. I'm a I'm an artist with a camera. And just in the same way that an artist uses um, oil paints, canvas, brushes, I use the camera and lights to tell my story. And and also what's a vital part of what I do is all my images are printed on metal. And that is right, well quite important. Okay, all right. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to rewind you here then. So you, you said yeah. that word story. You said about the fact yeah. that, because I don't want to get too too far ahead too soon on this one here, because no. I want to kind of bring you back a little bit, because <laughs> I think it's really important to understand, you know, where this this whole thing that we're going to talk about, this this, this whole concept, this trilogy that's taken over your life pretty much. I just imagine you mm -hmm. live, sleep, eat and breathe this. Um, that started from that one image, and then this story comes about. So... Give us yeah. those, you know, me, because I don't know what this is, but also everybody else watching out there. What is what is the story? What is that? All these images that you're doing, these 400 plus odd images you said that you've done, what is the story that they, those images are evolving around? So um, the first book's finished. So it's in three stages. Obviously, it's a trilogy. So 150 images in each. The first book, you follow 42 characters through the story but the whole story is actually about a small wooden box that's got an object in it and in the final book of the trilogy when somebody holds that object the world changes so i've got to get to that point and i wanted to create the whole lot in a series of fine art images basically rather than you know 
writing a book. I hadn't, I hadn't actually written anything since I was at school. Um, <laughs> so that was a big challenge. I thought, <laughs> and, and my editor, Tim, uh, called me um, the comma king because I put, you know, I put way too many commas in clearly. Um, so I had to take a lot of those out. Um, <laughs> but, but it actually was also very organic. It started with just six people. There's 150 in book one. There will be, when I finish it later on this year, there, there's over 500 in book two. And in the final book, there will be over 4,000 because my intention is to fly around the world to build a huge Lord of the Rings-style battle scene for the final book and photograph as many steampunks from different countries as possible to put them into that picture. Um, but it... So the story, each part of the trilogy finishes that part of the story but there's a bigger story running through the whole lot right and so this it, is like this is like a, a really extended kind of project then isn't it because i'd imagine obviously yeah. if you say you you know you tuned into ian's other people i've spoken to over the last you know 10 weeks or so i think every single time we've brought up that that one word project ongoing mm. project so Having having this that you're working on, which is clearly, I guess, it's, is it like your first project that you ever did and it's just become bigger than you ever imagined? It's just taken over. Do you find yeah. that it literally is with you all the time? And do you think that having that thing that you're working on consistently, you know, uh, with, with an end goal to it when you've got so many images, do you think that's kind of been a really big contributing factor in developing you as the artist, as the images? Do you think your images have... Do you see a change yeah. from the very start to where you are now, you know, by doing them consistently? Yeah, I do. But I, I also have to have a break from it. So I do other work. So I, I do some other fine art stuff that, that's nothing to do with this at all. But that's to give mm. me a break because I've got all of this going around in my head. If for, for example, to explain that a bit more, perhaps, I will see somebody uh, at a steampunk event or at Comic Con, so I, I was doing a lot of Comic Cons with the Ministry of Steampunk. Mm. We we did a lot there, um, and to be honest, if it, if it wasn't for the Ministry of Steampunk, I probably wouldn't be doing this either because they've helped me an awful lot. Um, Karen and John have been absolutely brilliant. Um, but um, I will see someone at an event and instantly know the character they can be with their family, whether what character they're going to play what mm. their backstory is and then i have a chat with them about do they want to be in this um at one point i was inundated with people emailing me please let me be in it um but i have to, the character has to come from them i i see them and that gives me that character so started off with six people 42 in the um in the first part of the trilogy Mm. And you're following their lives, everything that happens to them. I mean, that, you know, there's a whole, uh, the whole big thing. And I'm going to talk about this picture later. But the, um, that's, for example, is, is one of the pictures. And this shows why I feel I'm not a photographer and I'm an artist. It's because, <laughs> okay. it, it, well, if, if you, as a photographer, if you're going to take a portrait, um, generally, you'd have all the background out of focus. You use depth of field. All photographers would use depth of field to make you, the viewer, want to focus mm. on a particular thing. Yeah. I don't. Every bit of my images are heavily detailed to corner to corner because I use light to get you to look where I need you to look. So that's how I set right. my studio up, et cetera, et cetera. And that is because I studied the way that Caravaggio and Vermeer did it with a paintbrush. And if they could do it with a paintbrush, I must be mm -hmm. able to do it using, uh, using just light and a camera. Um, but I will talk that particular picture, talk about when we get to yeah, that. Yeah, we've got that later. one lined up, haven't we? But I mean, you know, yeah. what you say there about light, I mean, per, look at this here from a comment from William Davidson. That pit looks like a painting. What a master of light. I mean... You couldn't wish for a better comment, could you? Do you know what I mean? Uh, That's exactly what it's all about. That's fantastic. Thank you, William. Um, okay, all right. Well, I guess 
there's a lot going to come from we're going to we we'll kind of run this like we did with Ian again. You know, I refer to Ian because I kind of I refer to you and Ian in a, in a similar vein, really, because you're both mm. very different in what you do, but very similar in so many ways. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of it's hard it's hard to explain explain exactly what I mean there, but maybe you understand it, and maybe Ian understands it. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to run it like we did with Ian. We've got we've chosen or you chose some images which would be good to go through rather than us just talking on a yeah. broad spectrum. We're going to narrow it down to a series of a few images, and you're going to give mm. us a bit of a breakdown to them because this the first one. I mean, my God, this is this is just unbelievable. This is where you sit back and your jaw drops and thinking, how many people? Let's let's bring it up. It's this picture here. It's just crazy. This one yeah. here, Gary talks. About, this is called the town, right? Yep. So first of all, I've done a bit of an Alfred Hitchcock because if you have a look far over on the left-hand side, um, that's me. I've put myself. I've just noticed I am, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I am the narrator of the story, so um, that's why I'm there. Um, and I, I'm, I just wanted to do that little nod to Alfred Hitchcock. So to explain this, there are 150 people, all photographed individually in a studio. Um, there are 37 buildings from all over the country. Um, I've cha <laughs> changed a few. Uh, and of course, the thing with it too is you're never going to know where you are if you're in the right position when you photograph a building. So you have to really start to be able to use the distort, skew and perspective tools in, um, in Photoshop. But also the other uh, thing about this is when I'm, when I'm shooting in the studio, I'm directing, it's like I'm directing a movie, movie. Everybody is being told what their character is, what they're talking about. And I will photograph them talking, having a conversation. And you'll see there's quite a lot of people in that. And if you, for example, if you look at the uh, bus and just in front of the bus is um, somebody with uh, red hair, well, their hair foils, but that, that yeah, is. Yeah, just about to uh, make that out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's. Right, she is picking the pocket of Colonel, Colonel Darne, and behind her, the boss of the Bullhead Gang is watching her because she is useless. She's basically a female mm -hmm. uh, artful dodger, but she's useless. Um, there's a whole story how Colonel Darne ended up with, a, with his uh, synthetic arm, mechanical arm, um, lost it during fighting one of the wars, blah, blah, blah. But then if you look up in the top left-hand corner, there's a woman hanging out the window. And to get that to work, I laid on the floor while she was on a pair of steps. But you have to take the, you have to, <laughs> you have to take the window out. Thanks, Steve. You have to take the window out, uh, put the room in behind her, put her back, and then put the window back. So there's all these elements. What I'll say to you is, it's two thousand layers in Photoshop because there's <laughs> there's seventeen what? layers to every person before they go into that picture and and also um, two thousand layers yeah and it's what six, computer are you running <laughs> it was 600 hours work well at one point i could watch an episode of eastenders just while i was loading up <laughs> but uh <laughs> no but it's, i would um, admit to that to be honest with you but hey. no I, no, I, no <laughs> not. Uh, but uh in truth it that enabled me to it, the thing, the thing about it is, yeah, two thousand. It's uh, well, look, there's 150 people and 17 layers to each person. That's adding towards wow. that already. So I edit them completely how I want them to look before they go into the picture. So it's not two thousand layers in one picture because it's 150 individual people that are then finished and then dropped in. So Gary, I've, I, got, I've got to ask you, sorry, Matt, I've got, to, I've got to put in here because somebody who's kind of made an er, early name, I guess, you know, small fish, small pond, but made an early name by using Photoshop and cutting out and stuff mm. and teaching people how to do those skills there. Mm. If you've got 150 people, you say, in that image there, mm. that you've obviously had to cut out. Can I just ask mm. what, when you are photographing these people, what kind of background are you putting you know, what, what is their background, which is going to make your life easier when it comes to doing the cutting out process? Look, it came from you, Lynn. 50% grey. All right, okay. That's it. Cool. came from you. That's what you, that's what I learned yeah, from I you. Yeah, I don't want to. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. yeah. Look, the thing, that, the thing <laughs> that I kind of say is um, 
only learn whatever it is that you need to learn in Photoshop. Yeah, to do yeah. what your yeah. end result, what you need to to get it to work. <clears throat> but I came to I think three or four of your tutorials to start with to learn the basics. As I was saying to you during the week, I learned, I went to another course that where I learned uh, shadows because that was yeah you went to down. see Adrian Sommerling, didn't you? Yeah, Adrian Sommerling had a day course good with man. him, and, and what a that good man. actually. Um, that sorted out my shadows because that was the issue, the issue that I was having. Um, but also, I think um, at the end of the day as well, it's a story and the story mm -hmm. has to continue through that image. So uh, there are people on the left hand side having a discussion and there's people on the right hand side talking about them. Um, but if you have a look, uh, there's you can see right at the front, for example, um, the people that are in the brown striped yeah, outfits, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they're in Liechtenstein and they come to the Asylum Steampunk Festival every year. Um, so I um, I flew to Liechtenstein for one day and photographed them all to be in this picture. And wow! And there's one final part of this image would be um, – if you're standing outside during the day and you're looking into the distance, there are water droplets in the air that make the buildings at the back a little bit more faded. So I had to put a layer in for that to push the buildings back because I don't use depth of field. So it's mm -hmm. the light that gives it the depth. You're kind of, you do what reminds me when you say that your, your images are very detailed and you can go to any, any area within an image, certainly like that one, the town then you could look, right in the foreground or right in the background, and it would all be in focus. That yeah. very much reminds me as well of Bert Monroy, you know, the, 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 the grandfather of Photoshop, who is, who is a digital artist who creates mm. scenes of, you know, recreates places, like he re recreated a very famous location in Holland and in New York, and, and it, it's all created in Photoshop, so much so that you can zoom in and in and in and in and in, and eventually, way in the distance, there could be a tiny, tiny window, but because they're high-resolution pixels, he brings it forward, and there's somebody in a window shaving, which you wouldn't have known about had yeah. you not zoomed in. No. Incredible. That's what this reminds me of. So there is in that picture, right in the very background, Right in one of those windows at the top, there's one of the steampunk angels is standing there. So the other thing, the other thing, of course, is it's all well and good getting all the perspective of the buildings right, but you've got to get the people right as well. Yeah, yeah. So the the people have to be in perspective all the way to the back of the back of the shot. It's staggering. For somebody who kind of started out in Photoshop, and I see that, and I thought what I was doing was detailed and layered for <laughs> 2000. You've just kicked the sand right in my face. You really have. But let's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's the first image in that one there. There's a second one, isn't there? Let's have a look yeah, at the second is. one then. So this one is called Chaos, am Chaos. I right? Yeah, so this is from book two. It's the same street, but looking in the other direction. Now, uh, there's a difference here. The difference is not the two uh, ladies in the middle, obviously. Um, <laughs> there's one person in the picture who's got his back to you, and that's right over on the left-hand side because yeah, I've seen in, the the hats on book, in my second book, I have a time-travelling serial killer, and that's him. As you do. He's come, he's come back in time to kill anybody that's had the box in the first book. The first person he kills when he comes back in time is the pawnbroker. Um, <laughs> um and he has, he needs to get into the police morgue. So he uses, because, because basically inside the pocket, he missed it, uh, is his little book that says, I sold this to so-and-so and it's gone here. Uh, he needs that book. So he needs to get into the police morgue and he gets into the police morgue, um, to steal it. So he uses two women from the local bordello to create chaos. Now, and you're probably thinking, where do, where do I take all these people? So I take my studio to the Steampunk Festival. So I have it set up there. And people, obviously, they're all dressed up for the weekend. They, you know, mm. they look amazing. Um, and also, I need to do them justice because they do look amazing. So I have my studio set up. I tell them what I want to do. And all those people were told this is what you're going to be looking at. Now, you won't really be able to see it on this because it, because of the 
uh, resolution. But there is one woman at the back with a cane on the left hand side, There's a man in a wearing a red waistcoat. His wife came within an inch of actually hitting him with that when I did the shoe. Because <laughs> and I said, Well, easy. And she went, I just don't like the thought of what he might be looking at. So oh, really? you know, it's, it, yeah, they they all I want them to be the character. I want them, you know, and that first book, I took eight and a half thousand pictures to get the 150. Because I'm taking, come on, no, this is what I want you to do. Dang, hold on a second, you're laughing. That's not going to work. Think about what your character is. You know, and sometimes it does get a little bit much. I mean, there's in that same picture, there's, uh, there's somebody uh, just behind the women on the right hand side she's slapping her husband around the face and uh i made him do that <laughs> <laughs> i needed i need them to i need the um i need the reality the real realism of it actually yeah 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 so yeah gary i've got to ask you obviously you've um you know you, you've come from into from outside of this world into this world and I'll say mm. steampunk because that's, you know, initially where you kind of these characters, we would all think they're coming from, if you like. But did you ever find that, I guess it's not the case now, but did you ever find that coming into that world, which you were never part of beforehand, were you intimidated by it? Were you, were you accepted or did it take a long time for them to kind of bring you into the fold or what? How did that work out? Right, so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of people um, who photographers come along and dare I say it, take liberties with people at steampunk events. They yeah, can yeah. be quite rude. They don't ask anything. I went along that first one, I, and it took me ages before I took any pictures because I really felt I needed to ask permission, which I did. Um, and then when I came up with this idea, whoops, it's not helpful. Uh, when I came up with this idea, banging the mic, um, I then felt that they needed to understand that I was I meant it because there's too many people that come up with an idea and never follow it through. So I needed yeah, to understand yeah. them to understand that I meant it. Um, and yeah, it took a little while. However, um, I the following year I exhibited at the uh, asylum. So my first one was 2013, and then in 2014. I had an exhibition in London. Uh, loads of steampunks came because they all then realised that this was actually going to happen. And and, and that and that was in the first it. within the first year, you say, of doing it. Yeah, I have three so, pictures. And that so was, I was just, that I was message. Gonna, sorry, I was just going to ask you there. Yeah. How how many images did you say at the exhibition? I just had three at at the asylum that first year. In fact, wow. that message you referred to from 2013 on Messenger actually said i've just had my first three pictures and the first three were printed on on paper and framed they weren't on metal it wasn't until i went to uh san francisco pier 39 guy opposite there print has his work printed on metal i saw it and that was it from that then onwards i think yeah, yeah, yeah. i've got to, i've got to have this so yeah um just because the show is well uh, that the, the print is so important it's was it what's the yeah. what's that phrase that I heard? It's the uh something about the, the, the art doesn't end at the edit. That's it. Yeah, the art yeah. doesn't end at the edit, meaning there's another process, the printing. Because you can do all that work, can't you? And like you say, you do you get them printed out on paper and it doesn't do them any justice, but then all of a sudden you notice because of the the kind of images that you're producing here, incredibly detailed, you know, the saturation and what have you, and the contrast. It needs a medium like metal to, to really bring it to life, doesn't it? Well, uh, I've just seen in the comments that someone's asked, is the, red, is the lady with the red hair in that picture the same lady as Adela Dor in the previous town? Actually, no, it's the lady on the right of that picture that is Adela Dor in the series. Oh, right, okay. In fact, uh, I've just seen a Scarlet Butterfly. She's actually put a comment on there in the comments. But, yeah, that's, that's her. So... Uh, there you go. I've worked with Gary, so yeah. You do was get Scarlett the one who was doing the was... old slapping bit, or no? <laughs> no, 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 no. She, she is. She's the uh, the the bottom on the right hand side of that picture. So yeah, she's uh, 
That's and to be honest, Wonderful. those two in the studio, it was hilarious because they just couldn't walk in time. They kept falling over each other, so it was a really uh, funny shoot. And in there's, fact, a, there's an interesting uh, comment here, uh, Gary. One from my friend Tim. He's just put. Gary's not just an artist of light, he's a choreographer, writer, producer and director. Impressive. And I couldn't agree more, especially with the choreographer bit, because when you look at something like that yeah, yeah. and something like this, when there is so many people, all photographed kind of individually or as couples or whatever, but mm. you're having to get them, choreographer and director, yeah, yeah, I, you're having to get them, right, imagine this and this is this happening, give me a, mm. give me a reaction. I mean, that takes a lot of... It's a lot more than put your nose to the left a bit. That's it. Put your eye here a bit. There's a I lot know. more involved than that, isn't it? Uh, I, don't, I don't. And that's one thing I don't do. I don't. Um, what I do say is that none of my portraits are portraits because they look how I want them to look. Um, some of the people call me the digital plastic surgeon. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, they, they have to look the character that I've got in my mind. And what also happens is, so there's a, there's a guy in the, again, it's too small to see, but in the, in the first town picture, you, uh, you won't see him. So, but he's just walking along with his wife. That's the only time you see him. It's not his wife. It's another, another steampunk, but it's the only time you see him in the whole story actually with his wife. And he is the pawnbroker. So, right. you know, I'm, I'm constantly weaving the characters, um, and every time I, when we get when we get to talk about the props, I'll talk about uh, one which is the mask in particular. But um, often we'll be uh, we'll be having a conversation, and my brain will be ticking along quite nicely, and I think, "All oh, right, that's yeah, okay, got an idea here." I just so thought, a, I thought shoot, it was a really interesting a thing that you said, Gary, about the fact that you can be at somewhere like at a convention or whatever, and you'll mm. see somebody and go, God, them. Yeah. And yeah. then this character comes into your head. So I'm, I'm kind of guessing by by you saying that, that the story really, although, I, you know, it might have this original path, it yeah. has kind of veered off a little bit because you think, well, I need to bring that character in because that would be a good twist to this, that, and the other. Is that right? Yeah. 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 So it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting thing because imagination is something that that you can't teach somebody you can give them a bit of a steer but it's one of those things you've either got or you haven't and uh, and that mm. and doing this allowed my allows my imagination to run a bit bit wild but uh, and I, i'll mention to you about my artist statement which there's one line at the beginning which basically sums it up which is everybody says this you've got to think outside the box. But actually, if there is a box, it's already too late because your imagination should only be bound by your ability and whatever it is you're going to do. So the more Photoshop you learn, the more you learn about lighting, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. means you can start creating even more ridiculous images. So that your skill level what you can do with this and this matches what you're thinking and yeah. all that stuff as well yeah cool i like that and it, it mm. yeah it's uh it and as i said I, I studied the way caravaggio and vermeer used light if they can do that with a paintbrush you know there's got to be a way of doing it i'm not the reason i don't i say i'm not a photographer as such is look there's some brilliant brilliant photographers who can take landscapes etc unbelievable pictures um I, that's not me. I I need to be able to take the elements that I need to build the images. Yeah, sure. All right, okay. Well, we've got other images now that we're going to have a look at as well because I'm keen to find out more about this one because you you mentioned it and this one I believe is called All In. Yeah, All In. So oh, explain this uh, one to well, us then, mate. Okay, so Warren in the middle. He's an absolute little rat bag. He is. He's, uh, he's got his fiance working in a bordello, so he's got money coming in. He's uh, carrying on with another uh, one of the women in the bordello that the other one doesn't know about, and he's also trying to get into Adela Dor Schultz. So uh, he's but he's a <laughs> compulsive gambler, and he has stolen the money out of his parents' save. He's gone to this gambling den, 
um, and he's gone all in. Now you can see he's just swapped his wine for a brandy. Um, he's gone all in, but the guy at, with his back to us is holding two aces. There are two on the table. He ends up losing everything because all six of the others, the woman behind looking over his shoulder and the other uh, five in, uh, playing poker, um, they're all in it together. So he's completely right. done. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this is they weren't all there for the shoot right. uh, at, uh, at different stages. So you can imagine how difficult that is to get the lighting right, make sure that the, the table wasn't there, the cards weren't there, the money wasn't there, the background wasn't yeah. there, and neither was the lamp. I just where where is that around. background? Where, where was that photographed background, uh, Gary? Uh, the background is, is a is uh, one of the rooms at the back of uh, in down in the dungeons of Warwick Castle. So um, <laughs> that's why, yeah, that's why it's a gambling den. Um, right. Yeah, I've done. I've I go to a few places. I think you know, as I mentioned, I do go uh, all over the world actually to find the elements that I need to. Um, I'll try to stay in this country because it's cheaper. Uh, but but I do, yeah. I I know what the picture needs to be. And I yeah. need, and the thing, the thing that I create more than anything, is atmosphere. It's the atmosphere in the picture. This printed on metal looks like it's backlit, because mm. again, with metal prints, the light goes through, gets reflected back. It looks, it looks really quite amazing. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So, I mean, that that image there. Obviously, nowhere near as many layers as no. as these kind of images here, but. Just out of curiosity, what kind of time frame are we looking at? Let's say you've got all your, you know, you've got all your elements that you need. You've got all the portraits taken. You've got your backgrounds. You've been to Warwick Castle and you've got all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. How long are we talking about for you to put it together? And is it is it like a marathon edit? Meaning, do you go, right, I'm doing that today, nothing else, and you crack on? No. Or does you, do you spread it? So the thing that you have not... Uh necessarily mentioned is i do have a day job i've got a business that i run with my son um this first book was 40 hours a week on top of that so wow. generally i'll come home i have something to eat and then I, I could be sitting there till one or two o'clock in the morning trying to get a picture done um but it's the same way that if you uh if you're recording music and you start mastering a song your ears get used to it your eyes get used to working on yeah. a picture. You have to have a break. I mean, I've finished a complete, oh, it was in the first book, the uh, one of the pictures. We went to get it printed. We're sitting there look, going through it all, making sure everything's all right. And then I had to stop and said, I've got to go back and re-edit that one. And they went, why? Because there's, <laughs> there's a smoke detector on the ceiling. I hadn't even seen it. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. that I think you what I you mean? say there, it's really, it's really interesting you say that. I, I, I totally get what you mean because I used to refer to it as being pixel blind, and I used to say this to people that you know, there's certainly nowadays there's 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 this urgency, you know, you go out, you take a picture, get back, edit it, post it online. Do you know what I mean? There's this urgency to yeah. do it, and one of the best bits of advice I was ever given, and I think it was Matt Klaskowski who gave me this advice, and he just sort of said, just slow down, you know, you come back back your stuff up and leave it. And also when you're editing, don't slog away at it. Because no. I imagine from what you're saying about the lighting, you know, you'll you'll do dodging and burning. And that, I guess yeah. out of anything that you do when it comes to editing, that that is one area in particular where you can very easily go too far. But you yeah. might not notice it because you're, you know, you're making these slight adjustments with the highlights and shadows. You keep doing yeah. it, keep doing it, keep doing it. If you go away and then come back, you go, oh, my God, what have I done? Yeah. Which is why it's always good to work non-destructively. So, yeah, I'm totally with you, mate. I totally, totally get what you're saying about that. Yeah, it's very easy to go too far. And people go, oh, HDR. No, it's not. I paint the detail in. And I think, so I, I go around the country. I do a talk that's called Reality is for People with No Imagination. And when I'm talking about Photoshop in particular, there are, there are always people who think that by finding a filter and putting it over the whole flipping yeah. lot, the answer, and it's not. It should be applied, masked, painted where you need it. Um, mm -hmm. Again, uh, you know, not blowing smoke up your body, but uh, that came from you. All, all, everything that I, yeah. 
I started with came from you, which then allowed me to learn more. Um, well, I'm, I'm you, humbled. I am definitely you gave humbled. Me I the genuinely mean that. That question. That's you lovely to hear. Basic. That's lovely to hear. It really, really is. So, yeah, thank you very much. You, I, I literally just given you a few little hints and tips, mate. You've run with it, so good on you. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it just a, a, for a break. There, we've been going for 46 minutes. Blimey. So, lub- I know. Told you to go quick. Have mm. a bit of a lubrication, and then we're gonna come back. So I know we've got another, se- another series of images to go through. But then I want to ask you about things like props and. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and just talk about the exhibition side of things as well, how all that came about. So yeah, we, we are like with Ian, we're going to go over time just a little bit. But clearly, you know, there's there's a lot of people interested. Some amazing comments, by the way. I've been kind of starring stuff for us uh, when we get towards the end. But go on, uh, well, don't go away because Bluetooth, you know what that does. Grab a quick sip uh, and I will just uh, quickly uh, play just a very short break while I grab a sip as well. I'm going to play the video that I did last week. I think I played that L60B LED light. Uh, and the only reason I'm going to say, play that one for now from Westcott is just to show it again, because in the few days ago, I was again with my friends in Wales, and we did uh, we did a photo shoot with that, with my Sony and with the iPhone. And it's, I'm just, I have literally fallen in love with using constant light for, uh, for doing portraits. So Chris from Carmarthen Cameras, if you're in the room, I don't know if you are or not, I'm going to be calling you again. I want a second light. But just in the meantime, let me just quickly play you this video while I have a quick slip. Dramatic music there. I almost choked on my water then. Yeah, clever <laughs> stuff. Right. <laughs> okay, Gary, we've got... Uh, I'm really conscious of time here, but I want us to dive yeah, into this right. other other image here that you saw, this series of images that you said to talk about, because, again, like all of them, they're just really intriguing, especially this one, which is the first one you said to bring up, this one here. Yeah. What's this one called? And tell us a little bit about it. Uh, it's called The Secret Falls. So... Um... This is uh, Julia Scott, otherwise known as Alice Strange. Um, basically, she's a, a, in my story, she is the Reverend Potts' daughter, whiter than white. Never, people don't know uh, there's a dark side to her. Um, but this image came around because I was doing a, a shoot. With, we actually were doing a shoot for her album, and this uh, image came along. This, sorry, she came along with that dress over her arm. I asked her to go and put it on. And the minute she walked in with it on, straight away, I said to her, mm, get on the floor. And she went, uh, okay, sat on the floor. I pulled all the dress out. You smoothie. She said, she said what the hell's <laughs> going on? And I said, you're going to be a waterfall. And that image came to me just seeing her in that dress. However, yeah. in my story, she has a secret life as Alice's Night Circus, which is a musical performer, and she goes to this waterfall, and as she sits in the water, the water becomes her dress, and she um, soaks up the energy, which gives her the ability to miniaturize people for a short period of time. So if you bring up the next picture, she miniaturizes a circus. Uh, So inside that Victorian birdcage, there is somebody walking along tightrope walker going along the perch in mm-hmm. fact there's a scarlet butterfly again in the middle there uh, because she's uh, doing a bit of a pole act on one of the bars there are um 
all sorts of magic ball man he's there uh, all these people are inside that bird cage and all i asked her julia takes direction amazingly so i just said to her look I just wanted to walk across the front of the um, yeah. backdrop and uh when i count to three just look over your shoulder and it took a couple of goes but she got it mm -hmm. but then i've then got to cut out the bird cage <laughs> Yeah. Cut out the people, put the people inside the birdcage, then put the shadow on the back wall. Got Gadget the dog sitting down there on the left hand side as well. Yeah. Um and he is part of seven time travelling kids who've come back in time in the second book. Um and he came with them and she ends up uh, uh taking the dog. But um if you move on to the next picture, which is the one that you used as the thing, so Basically, what happens is when she's performing on stage, the circus is doing their act, hanging off her umbrella. Um, and even <laughs> there's even a little guy down the bottom there on a penny farthing as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, again, not only have you got to cut all these people out, but you've got to make it look like they're genuinely doing their act. So it, it yeah, it's another one of those pictures. And, and I can't take full credit for that because uh julia was also heavily involved in that concept that was that came initially from her but it ended up in my story incredible i can't imagine the time that i mean you've explained a little bit about it but the time and the patience there's a thing the patience which we haven't mentioned to be cutting out not just all these people with all the hair and all the you know these elaborate you know items that they're wearing but you know the, the the sort of thin bars and then taking them out, putting people behind them, putting them in front, and just yeah. Well, and Mind also I mean, that, dedication. That's, there. that's a cage dress that she's working, which wearing, which doesn't help much. <laughs> you got yeah, you got yeah. To cut that out as well. But yeah, um, but you know, I'm I'm used to it. Uh, I have a particular work throw, uh, flow I go through all the time. Um, but you know, that's that's what I like doing. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Well, one thing I really want to have a look at, because when you told me, well, the stuff that goes into this, I was just like, <laughs> oh, joking. It's the props. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of clothing. There's a lot of props, a lot of locations. But these props, my God, let me just bring up the one. First of all, this this image here that you gave us to put up. But yeah. this kind of stuff here. I mean, what the, those yeah. ones in the top right, am I right in saying that they're the ones that were in the first image? Is that right there? Were they Indeed, used there? Yeah. Oh, there yeah. you go. Indeed, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so basically Peter Walton, who is uh, names there, because uh, he is an utter, utter genius. So he made the wings. Um, they steam as well. Um, and, but, and also, if you look on the left-hand side, uh, that is a stainless steel bustle that he made Julie, who then made the dress to go with it. Because in part of the section of the book, she uh, she's got she's actually genuinely got a tattoo on her side that looks like she's been ripped open, and she's uh, all cogs and pistons <laughs> inside. So um, I wanted I said to her, "Can you make a dress where that shows?" Because I want that in the final part of the book. And then he made this stainless steel bustle, which actually wow. all folds up when she sits down um the, you know and there's different guns the pipe um and then if you then move on to the next prop image which oh, this this one here it's yeah, like what these, are, the... these are mad so it took Peter that's, that's real make... that, that's not ai there that's real no 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 no, a... no 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 i don't i'm not a fan of yeah <laughs> some i'm not no they're real so on the left hand side this is book book one both of these in book one but the the mask on the right is at the end, but the one on the left is um, it's called The Necessity, has time-travelling capabilities. The little lever at the bottom that you can see sticking out just above the, the sort of base, if you yeah. just give that a tiny little nudge, it just opens up very slowly, all on its own, totally mechanical. Uh, the orb in the middle grows, grows um, green. Took Pete, Pete uh, I think, 21 attempts of casting it, because they kept exploding and then three weeks polishing it it is mind-blowing piece of work all it? in stainless steel brass and in fact the hands are um solid silver and then on the right hand side the mask um he said to me 
I really want to make this mask. I don't know how you're going to fit it into the story. And I went, you let me worry about that. You just make it. Um, he molded that to his head. So he, he cast mm -hmm. his head and then built that in stainless steel. The teeth are real teeth. Um, the eye that's going green has copper eyelids that open and close randomly inside is a genuine false eye. Um, and then the little tubes coming from the back to the eye, they carry the tears to it. And then that piece that goes over his head connecting to a stainless steel spine at the back that um, moves when he walks. Um, it's just mind-blowing. That is, that, and really and truly, um, the beauty of this is it, it, there's quite a lot of collab collaborative stuff goes on because we have a big chat about what the image is going to be. And, you know, Pete, I needed him to be bald because he's... That's why he's made the mask. He's been hit by a spell by Corvus the Witch. That's hit, hit him that's taken his face apart and he build, rebuilds his face in metal, which he's done. But, of course, Pete wasn't going to shave his... He wouldn't shave his head for anybody, let alone me. Um, <laughs> so, again, I had to Photoshop his hair out, um, which... And then Julie's covered in tattoos. I had to remove a load of them. So, yeah, it gets, uh, gets quite a, quite I mean, a lot that, of... That, that just, that's just mind-blowing, isn't it? I mean, what... Yeah. I mean, how long has it taken to make something like that? And what's he doing with it now? Is it all... No, he's got uh, got both of them. Uh, need them for the second second and third books anyway. But uh, uh, once... Look, this I've had 18 approaches for this to be a film or TV series. And I always say no because I want to finish it. I don't want Game of Thrones to happen again where, uh, you know, it doesn't finish as well as it could have done. So once I've mm. finished it, if somebody wants to do that, great. But well, we've got all the props for a start. I mean, those wings are four grand each. The the necessity on the left, if Pete sold it, it'd be 12. If he sold the mask, it'd be 25. So Jeez. it's that much work. Did say at Comic-Con once when we were showing it, talking to a whole big audience, and I said, oh, the teeth are genuine because when his grandmother died, before they took her off, they, he quickly whipped the teeth out. <laughs> but <laughs> You are joking. Somebody, <laughs> yeah. Somebody actually said, no, 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 they're far too clean to be an old lady. <laughs> God, blimey. But he got wow. from a dental technician, yeah. He's, 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 he is an absolute genius. That's incredible. And again, so like you again, say, what a collaboration with people. Yeah. It's almost like, this. it sounds corny, but this was kind of meant to come together, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? You with your imagination, them, these people with incredible kind of... Um, well, skills for a start off, like making stuff like that's just incredible. And their imagination as well, the two together, what a recipe. Yeah. Amazing. And it's wow. And that seems to have carried on because, you know, when it, when we get to uh, talking about exhibitions, um, it's carried on because, you know, obviously I've, I do the asylum every year. I'm in the castle. Um, they, they have me back. They, as I said already, they've been unbelievably supportive. I, I would struggle to have come close to doing what I'm doing without uh, this. And a, and a lot of the work that I've sold um, has come from that that as mm. well. But um, I, or I'm also doing a lot of art exhibitions. Um, and they, they, and generally with Flux, which is uh, run and curated by Lisa Gray, who's, again, is mm -hmm. another absolute genius. That's um, a name I've heard, definitely. And, yeah, and, and, it, and it's because she's she's a brilliant curator um but we're like a family and so what i've now started doing which i think you might have seen this week uh, the first one of really is i've started collaborating with other artists mm. taking their work and putting my stamp on it putting something of them in it just done one uh, recently with um jane farley where she's got a uh, a painting that is yeah, I keep banging the mic. Sorry, um, got a painting that is um, where she's where it's an underwater scene. I've put her in that. Um, I'm working with Caterina Diaz because she's a, a collage artist, so I'm going to create the background that she then works on. So it's a different world, completely. The art world is very different. But somebody has put in the uh, in the questions. Do I print on metal for, for the steampunk side? No, I print on metal for the luminosity and the vivid uh, nature right. of it and the detail. Um, 
and that is absolutely vital that uh, that I have that because that I what I do in what I do in Photoshop is based on the fact that I'm going to print in metal. Basically. Yeah, I bet that um, that mask that was made must look incredible when printed on metal. Yeah, I mean, yeah. wow. Yeah, I, I can is... imagine now that paper just yeah it would fall flat. Even even like a titanium based paper, it just would never do it any justice. No, wow, no, and I can't uh, look. You know, I think we've had this discussion. We were with out of time, of course, but I, you know, talking about pricing, talking about how do you price your work, which we've had a discussion about. Yeah, yeah. And my my I I print seven of every image. And they sell for between two and six and a half thousand, and uh, each print. Um, but also because of the nature of printing on metal, um, they can be very slightly different, which makes them unique. Because mm. it's done with a stopwatch. You, you, I mean, you know how uh, Loxley do it. So it's done with a stopwatch, time, heat, etc. Um, but uh, again. Yeah, well, that image you got on the screen there was in quite a few magazines. Uh, very interesting story with uh, with the lady because she had never done that before in her life. Scarlet Butterfly met her at a uh, gym and just said, "Fancy come along to this shoot?" <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did a whole series. So, so that picture, mm -hmm. I did a series of balloon images with blonde women, uh, red balloon, cute dog, and a woman at an exhibition said. So nice to see the female form without any blemishes. I went, that's a little bit rude. What do you mean? And she said, those damn tattoos. Instantly, tattoo, black hair, bolt of lightning, black balloon, Rottweiler came to my head. And I did a series <laughs> of three, three images where it took me to the dark side, basically. Um, <laughs> but, but when I, this is, so they are not part of the Imagineering. Obviously, these are images that are um, stuff that I... I went in a different direction just to give me a break from it, but also mm. just to see how creative I, I could be. Sure. Now you mentioned obviously again, conscious of time here, Gary. I knew it, I knew it would go quick. Yeah. Egg exhibitions and stuff like that. How did mm. that come about? Is that something that you were approached about or did you, did you approach somebody because you thought I need to exhibit this to kind of spread the word. So, um, Again, I told you this during the week, but I am I am not in by any stretch of the imagination a negative person. My father taught me that there's no such word as can't. And therefore, I always believed I was going to have an exhibition. And I started telling people, I'm having an exhibition in London next year. I wasn't. I had no exhibition. Nobody had spoken to me, nothing. Just kept telling people, yep, next year. And sure enough, I went to uh, I went to an event. And the guy talking happened to have a gallery. And we got talking. He went, oh, I'll, I'll give, put an exhibition on. That was my first one. And then after that, I obviously I, I was exhibiting at Comic Con, exhibiting mm -hmm. at um, at the Asylum, but not uh, in a gallery. Um, and then I started doing a few sort of uh, art fairs and things like that. Um, and then Lisa uh, from Flux uh, emailed me and said uh would you like to be in the flux magazine and then then the flux exhibition came up and i sort of sent her a message saying you know any chance i could take part and she went well, you don't even have to um, apply gary you're in that's it i love your work so and to be honest flux is probably the main if not the only one that i really like doing just hold that image for a second uh, and this is another way of coming up with an <laughs> idea this is a line yeah. from Dracula called, I have crossed the oceans of time to find you. And if you can see what that generated in my head was a gothic lady hanging from a balloon, drifting across, across, across a sea of clocks, which is what that mm. is. Oh yeah. So that, but so you can get inspiration from exactly those directions, reading something and think, oh great, what a line. And what does that generate in your, in your mind? But, um, yeah, Flux is twice a year. The one that was uh, in Piccadilly at uh, Christmas was amazing. Um, I've had a solo show at the Fitterworth Gallery down in Sussex as well. Um, but uh, 
promotion is the hardest thing of all. Mm. You know, I had, I had quite great the PR company looking after me for a year. They got me on Sky News, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can get to a certain point yourself, and it plateaus, and you just mm. need help with someone helping you just get over that little hump and get, yeah. get a bit more, a bit more done. And Lisa, uh, quite great, just did exactly that for me. Super. So yeah, it's good. Wonderful. All right. Well, listen. There's. Uh... I've got, there's one thing I, would, I want to ask you, but before we'll come back to that just quickly, because again, conscious of time. Um, mm. But let's just dive in. It's not necessarily just questions. There's also comments. Let's have a look at some of these that have come through, because I want to make sure that uh, people take the time to do this. So I want to make sure that we get them in. So I, want to, I don't know, some of them I might have already posted up, but um, interesting one here. Lee Churchill's put, you and Ian collaborating. The world would explode. <laughs> You're probably right, Lee. You're probably right. <laughs> yeah, it probably uh, is right. Yeah, yeah. My friend Anthony Crothers has put, what a fantastic concept, getting ideas from song lyrics. I, I, yeah, I agree. I'd never thought of that until you mentioned it, but yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Tim Owen, this isn't just photography. These are stunning pieces of art, which is lovely. Um, let's have a look here. Amanda Glasspool, our friend Amanda Glasspool has put, with your work, I bet that every steampunk artist in queuing up have their photos taken with you. Amazing work. Yeah, like I said, you know, when you first kind of got involved in that world mm. and now, you know, you're a recognised name within it, I would imagine. So, and trusted as well, which is the most valuable That's thing. That's the most world, important. Isn't it? That's the most important mm. part is that these people yeah. um, trust you to show them in their best light as well, but mm. also. It's very easy for, look, took me three years of going to exhibitions and events dressed up before I could actually take my big coat off so no one could see me walking down the street. And now I don't care at all. I absolutely love it. But it, <laughs> I was so self-conscious because I just felt, oh, no, this, you know, and you, sometimes people call out and you think, oh, dear, this is now, though. The mm. thing about Victorian outfits, etc., they make you sit up and stand up a little bit straighter. Yeah, so these, look, these are exhibitions that I've done. Um, even that one bottom in the middle there, uh, I did the flipping catwalk <laughs> at one of the shows. So it just shows you um, how far it's gone. Uh, and then Colin Edmonds in the middle of that picture, uh, amazing uh, author. Um, I've met so many um, fantastic people doing this as mm. well. Some real, in fact, Marvel artists, all sorts at different events. It's been amazing. Yeah. Um, and these, so these is, this is um, Flux. Um, and bottom left-hand corner there, Tony Moore, who is an absolute, he is one of the uh, life's great gentlemen. He is a proper, a superb man. Um, Ex-Iron Maiden, ex-Cutting Crew. On tour wow. at the moment with his Awake show. Always comes to my exhibitions because I did his radio show a few years ago. Uh, the other guest didn't turn up. And we had two hours of proper banter and it was a real laugh. And he, he said at the end <laughs> of it, I think we're going to be mates. And he comes every time. But oh, cool really very supportive. Yeah, he's a great, yeah, brilliant. great guy. That's really cool. So, um, he, Go on, sorry, mate. Um, yeah, so all I was going to say uh, about the pricing element, because people wonder that often, where you yeah, get yeah. your prices from. And you can talk to some artists who, oh, I've spent this much on paint, this much on canvas, it took me this so many hours, and I'm going to price it. No, you look at it and think, actually, that's worth this much. It doesn't mean to say that I would pay that much for one of my pieces of art because I'm not an art collector but someone else who is and if you are too cheap they won't buy it because it's too cheap and obviously the more expensive you go your market becomes limited mm. but it's got to be the right value how many times you've been to a craft fair and there's a little old boy sitting there been making a jewelry box for three weeks and sells it for 15 quid he is yeah, un yeah. he's he's underpriced and he's cutting everybody else down in that craft fair because he's selling it mm. cheaper. You can't do that. And the minute someone puts their hand in their pocket 
the wallet, takes out their credit card and buys that picture, you know you're on the right track. And I, when I do my talks, I say how many people have got pictures sitting on their computer that they've never done anything with. Pretty much mm. everybody in the audience puts their hands up. And it's just having the courage to go, yeah. you know what, I'm going to print these and I'm going to go and sell them and see what Fair happens. Play. Fair play. Good advice. Now, I reckon you know this person from this comment here, Steve Malcolm. <laughs> He's my son in proud of grandpa. <laughs> awesome work. Yeah. How cool so is that? I'm, I'm, I'm currently teaching Hayden. He's, uh, he's my grandson, his son. I'm currently teaching him Photoshop. Um, and starting right at the beginning, um, he's, he will get the hang of it. He's a good little artist. I know so some good books, just uh, in case you're interested. Well, funny enough. And uh, <laughs> I, I did this, didn't I? I did this. I did this, Glyn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bless you. And you know what? The one thing that I've not, uh, one thing that in all this I've not, I've not actually shown is uh, is <laughs> the book. Is the actual book? Oh, of course, yeah. So, yeah. Look at that. So this this is the book. Um, wow. It weighs two and a half kilos, and it, it's been printed. Every image has been printed. Look, spot varnished, so that it matches my um, matches my metal prints. But also the quality was the most important part for me. It yeah, yeah. had to had to be that. Uh, and I I printed a thousand limited edition. And that's it. Won't be any more. Um, but because they're all numbered, you keep your number for books two and three. You end up with a proper collection because that's how I would like it if it was mine. So that was the the whole plan was that it was a real quality piece of art. It's it's not as expensive as um as a an art book but um and that's deliberate i always said it would be a certain price and it will it will always mm. be that because i want people to uh to, to like it well yeah. it's kind of interesting there's a comment uh, as we kind of wrap this up in a minute but ian's put here know your worth i was told when you take months to make exactly. art, why would you sell yeah. for less than your worth yeah yeah could and that's absolutely better. right. And yeah. I know, I know, and look, it does take a little bit of. Um, it takes courage. You've got to have a thick skin. Um, the thing that upsets me most is when people walk past an exhibition and say nothing. Mm -hmm. um, in truth, um, I don't care if someone goes, "Oof, don't like that." At least they've made a comment. But to yeah. completely annoy. And the other, <laughs> the other sentence I hate hearing is when you have a man absolutely raving about one of your pictures and then he says i'll just run that past my wife you know you're never going to see him again <laughs> <laughs> oh at least he said something <laughs> yeah, absolutely you think all right i've sold this this is definitely sold and then he says that and you think oh no <laughs> but you know Oh, well, listen, the last comment I'll put up, because obviously, again, I'm just wary of not going on too long with folks here, but I could, we've got to get you back on, Gary. But uh, Steve Healy sums it up, really. Stunning work by everybody. Or was that by everybody? I don't know, Steve. <laughs> Stunning work by everybody. Uh, Steve so, uh, was on the second, I think the second uh, one of your tutorials. Steve was there. That's how I met yeah, him. Yeah, the workshops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. One of the workshops. And... Uh, and then the third one, we both got together. And then we had a walk around uh, Bath as well together because That's so it. we did the photo walks. We did the one in Oxford with you and then the one in Bath with, um, in fact, um, um, God, his name, Kelby, Mr. Kelby came over. Oh, Scott he? Kelby. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Scott Kelby came over for, for that one in Bath. So That's right. Yeah. I remember, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. But before, well, before we wrap up, Glenn, let me just say... Um, <laughs> I was absolutely gobsmacked that you asked me to do this because, um, you know, all the things you do, all the stuff you do, uh, they, the artists, we're all very full of self-doubt as well. Um, yeah, yes, yeah. there's no such word of can't, can't, but we never, we never really think we're good enough. Um, but for you to have me on here, it's, it blew my mind last week when you asked me. Um, and... And it's it's an it's an unbelievable honour. Let me tell you, um, you've all, lot, you you are the person 
that started it off for me and the person I've always looked up to in this kind of work. And for you to have me me on here has just been amazing. And I want that to means a lot. That, that really does. Thank you. That really does mean a lot, mate. Thank you very much. And it was always going to happen. It was always going to I've always kind of, you know, although time goes by and you kind of, you don't lose touch and stuff, but you're aware of people being out there still and cracking on. But I guess if anything, this is the, one of the really good things about social media is you can be there without being there. Do you know what I mean? So I've always kept an eye on what you're doing. I knew that you'd really, really pushed it and just going for it. So it was always going to happen, always going to happen. And, and is it the right thing to say? I'm just incredibly proud of you, mate. It's just wonderful. And Thanks to think much. that you came along to my first <laughs> workshops and, you know, look at you now, hey? I don't do <laughs> workshops anymore. But <laughs> oh, no. And it, and it more's the pity because so many people benefited from those days you did. Um, I think it was, was it, it was Glenn with the, with the gun, wasn't it? That was one of them. Oh, Glenn Richards. Pulling yeah, the gun out, yeah. yeah, pulling the gun out of his pocket. That, yeah, you know, yeah, those, yeah. Those, um, those days where you learn so much in a day that it, it's like having a big shot in the arm to say, right, go on then. And that, that's when I do my talks, I'm only trying to inspire people. They're, not, they're never going to win a bloody competition doing what I do, a camera club competition, because that's not what the judges look for. Mm. I just try to inspire them to, go on, go and do something for you and have, just have a mm. go. It doesn't matter. Worst is you, you learn something. Yeah, uh, totally. That's, that's the whole reason for, for, for me wanting to talk. And to be honest, when I do retire from my day job, probably I'd love to go back to schools and talk to the sixth form and just give them a bit of, bit of help and say, look, come on, look at the things you can do if you put your mind to it. Yeah, you're a good man. You're a good man, Gary. And I'm, I'm going to finish this off here with this comment that uh, William's just posted up. Uh, imagine now you're in, of Gary Nichols from November the 2018 on the Steampunk Explorer online website is a great read. There you Someone's go. Google so folks, head on over to that. <laughs> as, as usual, I'll be putting links, Gary, into the description part. I'll create a blog post as well tomorrow with any other links that you want me to add. But just before we say our farewells, where would you want people to kind of go to see more of what you do, see all the kind of images that you've been creating during all of this? So there's, uh, there's a huge number of uh, images on my website, which is um, uh, g-n-p.co.uk. So yeah, there you go. There's a uh, there's a lot there's a lot of stuff on there, um, uh, especially in different sections. So there's there's all of that. But also uh, see that top bit's not loading properly. That's helpful. <laughs> but if you go in the ga Imaginarium Gallery, there you'll see uh, that that's where all those then come oh, wow, up. Yeah. So there's there's uh, there's a load on there that they can see. Um, I am Art Imaginarium on uh, both Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and one thing that I've uh, that, that I'm uh, sort of trying to uh, push is that promotion side, and it, you know more than anybody how hard that is. So if people can follow me and go and see me on those different places, that will be fantastic. Well, I will. I think tonight, Gary, you've gained quite a few new fans and followers from from what you do. Because oh, I hope so. Not only is your work inspiring. I love its individuality. It is you. It's what you want to create, and I love that. Mm. But just how honest and open you are about stuff. I love it. So, you know, from me, heartfelt thank you, and clearly from everybody else in the chat as well, because this that chat room has just been going. It's been going hell for leather, so it's been lovely. Nice, lovely little comment here as well from Kirsty. Wow, another amazing evening. You're getting the best guests, Glyn. Couldn't mm. agree more, Kirsty. Yeah, so, Gary, thank you so much. Don't disappear. Thanks very much. I'll yep. see you in the green room in a moment. All right. <laughs> but I'll just close this down. Right, let's just go back to me just there. So, folks, I told you, what, what an amazing evening. I, I am loving doing these and getting people in like Gary, like we've had Ian, we've had Jamie, we've had Stuart, all these people. Just I, I want to use this to kind of bring people onto the platform that maybe you haven't heard. You know, there's a lot of names that we've kind of heard day to day, isn't there? But there's so much talent that doesn't necessarily shout about it. That's what I want to use this platform for. So this is a request from me. Who do you know? Who would you like to get on here? Who deserve, you know, not deserves, who's, who do we need to get on here so we can share their work? The next three weeks are going to be incredible. 
We've got this guy coming up in uh, next Saturday, sorry, next Sunday, Ross McKelvey, who just creates the most beautiful portrait work. He'll be on next Sunday. I cannot wait to chat with Ross. I spent some time with him uh, in Yorkshire when I was teaching at a, an Adobe event that he also was presenting at. Then after that, we've got Tim Oliver, just the most, he's in the chat. I can see him there now. Incredible bird photography, other stuff as well, but his bird photography is just mind blowing. And then a guy called Jesse's coming in, who is in California, I believe, and he's a toy photographer. And he, you, you wait till you see this stuff. It's, he photographs a lot of Star Wars toys, but when you see the images, you would think they were stills from the movies. It's just phenomenal. But who do you know? You know, hit me up in the comments, whatever, send me a message, send me an email, contact through the website, whatever, to let me know who we can get on because I just love doing this stuff. And I've just seen Bert's put in there, Uli Steiger. Let's get my friend Uli Steiger on. Bert, that is a fantastic suggestion. Why the hell didn't I even think of that? But yeah, I will. I'll give Bert, I'll give uh, Uli a shout. Let's get him on there and that will blow you away. Um, but yeah, there you go. So I've told you what's coming up next week. Um, admin, you know the admin, iPhone Photography Conference. Check out the video that I did. Those of you who use Photoshop, there's um, a really, really useful update. You'll really kind of get a lot out of that. I think I think you'll find that's one part of Photoshop you'll start to use more and more rather than just using things like LUTs. You'll be able to keep everything that goes into them so you know what they're all made of and whatever as well. So very, very useful. But I'm going to uh, love you and leave you. I'm going to disappear. I've still got some stuff to do. Get ready for the iPhone Photography Conference. Uh, newsletter, sign up for the newsletter. And don't forget to subscribe. Let's press that button. Where is it? There we go. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, always helps. Yeah. Every little helps, as Tesco says, I think, isn't it? But there you go. Right, folks, I will love you and leave you. I will see you next week, same time, same place, Sunday, 7 p.m., Ross McKelvey. I will see you then.